Good morning, family. I hope you're having a great morning. Um, this is the daily word from the word for Monday, June 1st, 2015. My name is Matthew Gargano. For those of you who have not yet uh, watched any of the newly released video versions of the daily word. Sorry, I need to stop. I'm in my, my swivel chair this morning, fam, so I need to stop swiveling around. Anyway, before we get into the daily word, and I said this uh, last week, um, but I, but I want to reiterate it. Um, I need your prayers, family. Um, again, like I said last week, the daily word has been spotty, and um, and that's not good. You know, God has called me as a prophetic scribe to the nations, and it's a a responsibility that I take very seriously. I've been writing this column for the past four years, and. For some months now, I have been up against some serious opposition that has been coming against my ability to press in, hear as clearly as I need to be, and be able to execute um, the, the the task that the Lord has given me. So, for those of you who are prayer warriors out there, lift me up. Oh, I have to add a little something in my nose there. Sorry, y'all. Lift me up. Um, pray for me. Intercede for me. Catch me in the spirit. Um, for those of you who maybe are not prayer warriors, you can pray anyway and just pray, 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 pray. So thank you very much. Anyway, on to today's word. Giving in to temptation is tempting the devil. Yes, it is indeed. Did you know that when we give in to temptation, we're actually tempting the devil? The contrast between Eve and Jesus is that when the enemy called to Eve and came closer to inspect, she gave him a place to speak. This precious daughter of God gave her adversary a voice, thereby looking good to this manipulating miscreant. My brothers and sisters, we don't ever want to look good to the devil. We don't want to look good to the devil. We don't want to smell good to the devil. We don't want to taste good to the devil. You know, where God has called us to be a sweet fragrance unto his nostrils, being a sweet fra fragrance to God is automatically going to be a stench to the devil. We want to be a stench to the devil, family. We want to make the devil sick. That when he comes near us, he starts to feel nauseous because we are wrapped in the word of God. But when the same foe went to inspect Jesus, he was silenced by a barrage of it is written you can find that in matthew 4 1 through 11 when jesus when when jesus was tempted in the wilderness and the devil tried to tempt him after jesus was was had fasted for 40 days the devil tried to tempt him say hey if you're the son of god turn these turn these stones into bread trying to appeal to to jesus's flesh when he was probably starving um and jesus didn't engage the devil he just said it is written it is written. He he neutralized him with the word of God, and that's what we need to do. Jesus didn't look good to the devil, nor should we look good to the devil. Nor should we make ourselves attractive to this predator. Satan hates the word of God. So the more we wrap ourselves in the word, the more we ingest the word, so it be permeates from our pores. You know, back in the day, you know, when I used to, I used to drink, I used to hit the sauce a lot. We would get so drunk that it would actually ooze out of our pores. And people could smell the alcohol in us through our pores. In that same way, but obviously in a respectful way, we want to get so drunk off of the word of God that it just oozes out of our pores. And it is a stench to the enemy. A stench to the enemy. We need to be consumed with the breath of God so we can be less tasteful to the devil. This is why we must be prayed up like Jesus was. There is good reason why God tells us to pray without ceasing. Prayer is a weapon of warfare, and it keeps us wrapped in the fragrance of our Father. Ephesians 6.12 gives us our vantage point on the battlefield as it pinpoints, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. 
Satan and his dastardly demons want to take us onto their battlefield, which is the mind, the will, the emotions, and the flesh. They know if they can lure us out of the spirit realm and into the battlefield of our mind, will, emotions, and flesh, then they have the home team advantage. You don't ever want to give the devil or his demons the home team advantage. We play for team God. We play on God's home team, on God's turf. That's the way we roll. 1 Peter 4, 5, 8 warns, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If you don't smell like a tasty treat to this tempter, then he will walk away with a bad taste in his mouth. No good. Yeah. I did something very foolish the other day. Becoming very, very, very frustrated with a situation, rather than keeping it in the spirit realm... And fighting the adversary through prayer, I allowed this trifler to take me into my emotions. I left what I should have fought head on. Instead of finishing this fight in the spiritual realm, I allowed this demon to take me into the natural realm. He actually manifested as a hawk. Like a real live, I'm not talking in the spiritual realm now, I'm talking about in the natural realm. I became so frustrated because I lost my footing because I allowed him to take me out of my out of my out of my spiritual battlefield where God has placed me and given me the victory. And I became so frustrated that he actually manifested in the natural as a hawk. And even then I knew he was a demon because the Lord said he's a demon, and the Lord said, Do not speak to him. And I spoke to him anyway. I said, what do you have to say for yourself? And immediately, again, in the natural realm, I was just awestruck. Out from the north, a white seagull came out of nowhere and attacked the hawk. Now, come on now, y'all. You know that's all God, because in what world does a seagull attack a hawk? So I'm watching this whole thing, and I'm just like, wow. Wow, God. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Because here's the danger in this, my brothers and sisters. What I was doing was I was authorizing this demon to speak into my life. God forbid. That is no good. That is destruction. But thank God in his loving mercy, the Lord intervened by sending the seagull. And then here's the trip. So I get, this gets even trippier. So I get into my car to leave and I notice that the hawk came back. So I'm driving away and I'm seeing the hawk following me. And then again, out of nowhere, the seagull comes and starts doing circles around this hawk and starts pushing the hawk back. I was like, to God be the glory. I said, man, to God be the glory. So I, I had to do some serious repenting, some serious, serious repenting. We don't ever, 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 never, 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 ever authorize the devil to speak into our lives. We never give place to the devil or his demons especially do not ever give this lying destructive accuser permission to speak into our lives now granted this is a very more severe situation but how many of us allow ungodly voices to routinely speak into our lives the opinions of such as lack poverty unforgiveness, pride, lust, doubt, unbelief, divorce, adultery, unfaithfulness, sickness, infirmity, rebellion, addiction, fill in the blank. You know what I'm talking about. Stop allowing those ungodly, filthy, lying, destructive voices to speak into your life. Stop authorizing them to speak into your life. Let us never allow the disparaging voice of the devil or his demons to speak into our lives, but rather neutralize these foul foes with the victorious language of heaven, the effervescence, the bubbly, sparkly, it is written, found in God's uncompromising, uncorruptible, incorruptible, and pure word. Let us pray. Father, we repent for giving into temptation. 
Forgive us for every time we allow the enemy to take us off the battlefield of victory. Help us, O oh God, to be prayed up continually so that we are never engaging the devil or the voices of darkness out of our flesh, will, mind, or emotions. And forgive us, Jehovah Sabaoth, which means the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the battle, the Lord over the battle. For every time we turned from your voice and gave this conniving creature a place by allowing him to speak into our lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you for silencing the voice of our accuser and for giving us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt us. That's a promise from God found in Luke 10, 19. Now, as always, we can't just... He be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. We got to allow the word to challenge us. So in our take action, challenge our thinking, choose to pray without ceasing and to maintain your position in the battlefield, in the spiritual realm. Resolve, resolve to never again allow the enemy to engage you on his home turf, which is your will, mind, emotions, and flesh. And continue to fight the good fight of not looking good to the devil. We don't want to be attractive to the devil. Don't want to look good. Don't want to smell good. Don't want to taste good to the devil. So continue to fight the good fight of not looking good to the devil. For God, your spoken word has already given you the victory. So thank you, family. God bless you. Have a blessed, victorious day. I love you. I bless you. And I'll see you here again tomorrow. At our usual but most unusual, highly anointed place where humanity meets divinity. God bless. Peace out.